Welcome to this video on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. This is part two of two, where I teach you how to divide rational expressions. Let's begin. First of all, let's connect this new knowledge to existing knowledge, which is how do you divide two fractions? So here we have 2 thirds divided by 5 eighths. You could also see this written in this way, where you have 2 thirds divided by 5 eighths. So how do we do this? Well, the simple answer is that we don't do this. We do not divide directly. What we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. So what is the reciprocal? What do we mean by the reciprocal? Well, the reciprocal of a fraction just means we flip it. So the denominator moves into the numerator, and the numerator moves into the denominator. Okay. Um, you might also remember hearing keep, change, flip. That's another way that we uh, that sometimes this is taught. Okay. So what does that mean? That means we keep the two thirds. Okay. We change. I'll make this red here to emphasize it. We change the division to multiplication. And then we flip the fraction. So instead of 5 over 8, it becomes 8 over 5. Okay? So um, at this point, you can do one of two things. You can try to reduce. I don't see really any way to reduce. So then we would just have to multiply across. So 2 times 8 is 16. 3 times 5 is 15. So the answer is 16 over 15. So we are going to apply this same principle. Um, again, either think about it as multiplying by the reciprocal or you can remember keep change flip when we um, divide polynomials. So let's look at our first example. All right, so before we do that, we need to ask ourselves, for example, what is the reciprocal of seven? What if we have a whole number? How do we find the reciprocal of that? Well, seven is really seven over one. So when we flip it, it becomes one over seven. What about one? Well, 1 is 1 over 1. If we needed to flip it, we could still write it as 1 over 1. What about x? Well, same thing. We would have x over 1. So if we flip it, it would become 1 over x. So if you ever see a problem where you just have something like, for example, maybe you have something like this, x uh, minus 2 over x plus 3 divided by x minus 2, right? So if I ever have to deal with something like this, the first thing I would do is I would put this over 1. And then I can go ahead and do keep my first fraction, right? And then make this a cute little orange color here. Um, I change the division to multiplication. And then I flip the second fraction. Okay, so that's how I would do that if I ever have um, just something in the numerator and nothing really in the denominator. Again, you artificially just add the divided by 1. Dividing by 1 doesn't change anything, right? And then you do your keep, change, flip. Okay, so let's look at example 1. So just like in the previous part of this video series where we were multiplying poly polynomials, right, we still have a ton of polynomials, all of which will need to be factored. Okay, but before we get to that, before we get ahead our, of ourselves, we need to rewrite this division, right? This is a division symbol, not a multiplication symbol. So we need to rewrite it as multiplication. Okay, so um, how do we do that? Well, we keep the first fraction, right? So x squared minus x minus, oops, sorry, minus 12. We keep him over x squared minus 2x minus 8, okay? Then um, we change our division to multiplication, and then we flip our second fraction. All right, so now we can go ahead and do the fun and exciting part of factoring. Okay, so we have x squared minus x minus 12. This factors out as x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 3. Then we have x squared minus 2x minus 8. This is x minus 4 times the quantity x plus 2. Okay, bring down the time symbol. Then we have x squared minus, sorry, x squared plus x minus 2. We can factor that out as x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, and then last but not least, we have 5x squared plus 15x. Um, so this is just where we look for the GCF. The GCF is 5x. And then we have x plus 3 left over. 
Okay, so let's go back to our steps. We have rewritten our division as multiplication. We have factored all of our numerators and denominators. But remember, before we can do the fun and exciting bit of canceling things out, we have to look at and think about our restricted values. Remember, our restricted or uh, excluded values come from the denominator. We can multiply by zero all we want. We cannot, cannot divide by zero. Can't do it. No, no, no. Okay? You can even ask your calculator. Type in any number you want. Um, five divided by zero. Not going to work. It's going to say error or something like that. Okay? So, let's find our restricted or excluded values. So, we have x minus 4, not equal to 0. We have x plus 2, not equal to 0. Okay, we have 5x, not equal to 0. We have x plus 3, also not equal to 0. So, we have x cannot be equal to 4, x cannot be equal to negative 2. Here, we have to divide by 5. 0 divided by 5 is just 0, so x cannot be equal to 0. And last but not least, x cannot be equal to negative 3. So in this problem, we have not one, not two, not three, but four restricted values, okay? So um, remember, um, the book kind of ignores this, just kind of brushes past it. I make you put, put this in your final answer. All right, so now we can have fun. Now we can start canceling out our terms, yay! All right, so let's see. We have an x plus three upstairs and downstairs. Those can cancel out. Um, what else do we have? We have an x minus four. Looks like those can cancel out. And it looks like we have an x plus 2. Okay, well, that was pretty nice. We got canceled out a lot of terms. So it looks like x minus 1 is left over upstairs. And it looks like 5x is left over downstairs. Okay, again, in the textbook, online uh, homework, this might be enough. For me, nope. I want you to list these restricted values. So you're going to say x is not equal to. And let's just have a little bit of fun and put these in order from smallest to largest. Okay, so that is our final answer. X minus 1 divided by 5x. Again, we need to make a note of these four restricted values. Okay, um, again, if we were to graph this as a function, we would see that the function is undefined at all four of those values. Okay, we're not graphing this stuff right now. You don't need to worry about that, but believe me, it will come. <laughs> you will have to do that, and when you do, you need to make sure you know all of those restricted values. So this is really good practice. Let's look at example two. Um, so notice this is kind of um, a combo, right? We have one multiplication problem and we have one division problem. Hmm. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, what we need to do, the first thing we need to do is, as you can see down here, we need to write any division as multiplication by the reciprocal. Okay? So we don't need to change this guy. He's fine. We do not need to change this guy. We just need to change this last thing right here. Okay? So. Um, what I'm going to do, um, just to save time, um, I'm going to go ahead and factor um, each polynomial as I rewrite this, okay? So we have a squared plus 7a plus 10, okay? That, um, we can rewrite that as a plus 2 times the quantity a plus 5, okay? Again, this fraction doesn't need to change. Then we have a squared plus 6a plus 5. That factors out as a plus 1 times a plus 5, okay? All right, then we have a plus 1. Obviously, can't really do anything with him. Just put him right here, okay? Then we have 4a plus 8. Well, we can factor out a 4 here. So we have 4 times the quantity a plus 2, okay? And now we get to the part, right, where we have to change. We, we kept everything so far, right? Now we're going to change... What are we going to change? Well, we're going to change our division to a multiplication sign, right? And then we're going to flip this last fraction. So a plus 2 moves upstairs. We can put it in parentheses if we want. We don't need to. And a minus 1 moves downstairs. Again, keep change flip. Multiply by the reciprocal. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. All right. So we have done our factoring. Right? But remember, before we can cancel out our common factors, we need to think about what are those restricted values. And boy, do we have a lot of them this time. Right? This whole denominator, right? all of those linear terms, none of them, none of them can be equal to 0. Okay? So let's just start listing them. Well, a plus 1 can't be equal to 0, so a can't be equal to negative 1. a plus 5 can't be equal to 0. Uh, we don't worry about 4. 4 is just 4. He's never going to change. He's not a variable, so 
He's not really part of this. He's just hanging out. Okay, so a can't be equal to negative 2, and a, it looks like, cannot be equal to positive 1 either. Okay, so now we can have fun. Now we can cancel out terms. So we can start anywhere you want. The thing that jumps out at me first is the a plus 5. Um, something might have jumped out at you first that's different. I don't know. Looks like the a plus 1s cancel out. What else? Uh, looks like the a plus 2s cancel out. I guess I could cancel out this one or the other one. Pick one, guys. You only got one. Okay? You can't pick, uh, cancel out both of them. Okay? Um, so then what's left? Well, it looks like what's left over is a plus 2 upstairs. Um, and then it looks like there is an a minus 1 downstairs. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Well, oh, wait. What did I forget? I forgot this 4 here. There's also a 4. Let me rewrite this real quick. 4 times a minus 1. There we go. Okay, so again, we have this guy, this guy, and this guy. I think those are the only ones that are left. Okay, so again, um, in a textbook, I believe it stops here. Uh, online homework is, this is fine, right? But for me, personally, I want a list of your restricted values, okay? I'm trying to prepare you for the future, right? And the future is graphing this stuff and finding the holes in the, um, in the graph. Okay, all right, so that's it.